The Fall of America, Part 6, by Elijah Muhammad. America surrounded with the judgment of Allah. The four great judgments that Almighty Allah, God, is bringing upon America are rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. We see them now covering all sides of America, as the Quran prophesies, curtailing her on all her sides. And these judgments would punish the people into the center of the country, and there they would realize that it is Allah God who is bringing them and their country to a naught. Job in the Bible prophesies that Allah God has the snow and ice to use as his weapons in the day of war and battle against the wicked. We hear and read in the newspapers today of how great hill-like little mountains of snow are pushing down from the north, not only in the northern states of Minnesota, North and South Dakotas and Montana, but now the snow is in the New England states and they are declared to be a disaster area. The announcer of the disaster of snow in the New England states said that there have never been such great quantities of snow all up and down the coast to the Carolinas, the rain takes up where the snow leaves off. All around the southern border of America, storms are raging. There are tornadoes and heavy rains and more storms are on the way, one night after another. And in the north and far west and in the east, America is surrounded with the judgments of Allah. There are earthquakes and the sea is raging. The Pacific Ocean, the Pacific Ocean is now angry and is raging and tossing up great waves as never before. Why should these things hit America? The revelations teach you why. It is because America is filled with devils and has such unclean persons living in America. This is true under the symbolism of a hateful bird. Every filthy, slimy, wicked person comes here for a haven where they can do any wickedness he wants to do. The country is open and welcomes that type of person. As we see, the few little Muslims whose names, Muslims means those who have submitted to the will of Allah God. How the enemy hates us and seek to do all the evil he possibly can against us by falsehood. These are not the days of Noah, Lot, and Abraham, nor are these the days of Moses. These are new times. The enemy does not get away in punishing the righteous just because he hates them. God of righteousness is with us and he just laughs at those who try to fight against him. He has destroyed whole nations with less than the power of rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. The Quran has the record of people even being destroyed by gnats. Allah God does not have to have something great he does not have to go to work and get a block of iron or a mountain and throw it on them. He uses that which is with you, against you. The forces of nature are great weapons as we see them in play upon America. Storms after storms of snow and ice are rolling in from the north and are pushing great drifts that are just covering up everything. What can you do with a God like that? Job prophesies that Allah God has his weapons stored up to use in the day of battle and war with the wicked. He just takes some snow and covers them up. The Quran says that Allah destroyed people with just cold wind. He froze them. Do you think that you can get away with fighting Allah God? No wonder the second Psalm says that he will sit in the heavens and laugh at those who are trying to fight against him. He will have you crazy. It is true. The heads of the government of the Christian world are confused and they do not know that they are confused. Why? Because their greatest desire was to confuse us. Now Allah God has taken the confusion out of us and put it into them. Eat America. Help yourselves to the dessert that you have prepared for us. You eat it. All praises are due to Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. We went to Alabama, and to any state that we go to, we pay a high price per acre of land that our father's labor has already bought for us. Now he wants to kill us if we act humble and peaceful and want to buy back some of our own labor. 
I laugh at some of the things that I hear coming out of Alabama, and not only Alabama, but every other state in the union. They do not know the time in which they are living. Allah God is well able to take the country from you and give it to whom he pleases. It is in your Bible, read it for yourself. He took the kingdom from the wicked and gives it to whom he pleases. Those who will bring people into righteousness. America is surrounded with the judgments of Allah. The four great judgments of rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes and confusion in the heads of state. Four great judgments of America is to be plagued with too much rain will destroy property and lives. It swells the rivers and creeks. Too much rain floods cities and towns. Large bodies of water at the ocean shore. Lines will be made to swell with unusually high waves, dumping billions of tons of water over the now seashore line. Rain destroys property and kills cattle by drowning them in low lands. Rain destroys the hiding places of vicious beasts and reptiles, bringing them out of fighting in small towns and peoples, homes and farms. Rain weakens and destroys railroads, truck lines, truck beds and bridges. Rain undermines foundations of all types of buildings. Rain makes the atmosphere too heavy with moisture, causing sickness. With the rain can bring destruction to towns and cities bringing various germs, causing sickness to the people. It produces unclean water by the swelling of the streams and destroying reservoirs of pure drinking water used for the health of the people. Rain is a destructive army within itself. Hailstones are also a property and life destroyer. Snow is of the most dreaded plague when it comes to great drifts from five to 35 feet. It buries your property and lives. It destroys your highways, your cities, and your concrete and gravel in towns and cities. It puts a great burden of expense upon the cities. It puts a great burden of expense upon the cities to repair it. The cave-in of roofs and homes, the cutting off of homes, the cutting off of transportation, isolating areas, bringing about starvation, and communication is destroyed with the icing of communication wires. Snow looks pretty because of its clean look. Almost everything of nature is beautiful, but it can be turned into death and destruction against man. Snow is prophesied to be one of the weapons that God will use against the wicked, America. In the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 22 and 23, hell is also mentioned in the same two verses where God plainly tells us that he has preserved it against the time of trouble, against the day of the battle of war. The Holy Quran also teaches that God used snow, rain, wind, hail, earthquakes, and fire against former wicked people. Is America any better than the people we read about in the history that God destroyed? No, she is not as good. These people were as not as wicked as the American people. Earthquakes can destroy towns and cities instantly. America is in the grip of divine judgment. America is in the position toward her once slave, so-called Negro, as Pharaoh was with Israel as his slaves. She is in this position because of the injustice done to the American so-called Negro slave brought to America over 400 years ago and refuses to let them go free. They only say that you are free knowing within that you are not able to leave them without anything but the injustice continues to increase now they plan death so this is god as he predicted by the prophets to come to the defense of these people the so-called negroes in the last days after they served the enemy for 400 years the bible declares to abraham in genesis that god would judge the people to whom his people abraham would be in bondage this does not mean Israel. This means the present black people, the members of their black nation who have and are fulfilling their prophecy. God in the person of Master Rob Muhammad will not be defeated. The more evil, deceiving, tricking, and making of false promises to the American so-called Negro only increases America's divine chastisement, doom. America knows that her trouble lies in her mistreatment of the black man. 
the so-called Negro, but she is too wicked to give up the tricking the Negro and deceiving him on false promises. She just cannot stop. The opportunity is too open, and she thinks that there is no one to hinder her. But God has chosen us to be his people, and he delights in fighting the enemy. According to the history of the former prophets, he delighted himself by going forth against them when they exceeded the limit. So it is with America. They must be separated. America will not agree to see the Negro separated from her until she has suffered divine punishment as Pharaoh suffered. The same thing that other evil nations suffered before them is now coming upon this people. She seeks to keep her slaves robbed of opportunity and wealth. She envies success coming to American free slaves. She charged them with high prices to keep them down. She deceives them through a fruit of what we call Uncle Tom's in the political circle, clergy class, and all professional classes. She offers them little favoritism to help her work against their own people. They must be separated. Envy and hatred are growing between the two people. Regardless of their preachings of social integration, the truth must come. What is better than the program you find I have written? You two, black and white, cannot get along in peace since you never have gotten along in peace. Do you know why the white American does not like to talk with you about separation and why he calls separation of the two people the wrong solution for the peace between the people? He knows that it is the promise and that God will do it. Then why do they not agree with the separating themselves from you and me and we from them? Why are the black men and white men all over the earth now in disagreement with each other to live in peace? Do you know why? Oh foolish American so-called Negro, seek some of this earth that you can call your own to live on in peace. Unite and ask the government for a portion of America. This is what we need, somewhere to live to ourselves and to let the white man live to himself. The two people are not brothers. They are alien to each other. God did not make them brothers to each other. I ask you, my brother and sister, to learn this and learn it quickly and fly for your life to the refuge of Allah. Come and follow me. America, America's land being divinely curtailed. In the Quran, Surah 13, Ayat 41, see they not that we are visiting the land, curtailing it of its sides, and Allah pronounces a doom. There is no repeller of his decree, and he is swift in calling it to account. Black man in America, there is no one as blind as you are in seeing what is going on against America. I have warned you for nearly 40 years that Allah God came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, to whom praises I do forever, came to me and gave me the knowledge of the truth, and I have been preaching it to you continually. Now, you see what is going on, as America has done, so now it is being done unto her. America has surrounded the countries of other peoples. She has blown their cities to pieces, and she has killed their inhabitants. Those who were left alive, she put to flight, running for shelter from the destruction by America's might. It is very sad and horrible to look at the things that America has done, which are now coming on to this country. For many years, centuries of years, America has lived in a luxurious, wicked life while hating her black slaves and depriving them of justice, shooting them down on the streets, on the highways, and in the woods and fields for nothing. She did it just because she felt that she had the advantage and she wanted to kill black people as she was made to do. In the Bible, the book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 8, he sitteth in lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doeth he murder the innocent. His eyes are set against the poor. Up until this very minute, she is seeking to destroy the black man in America and deprive him of freedom to do for self. America never desires a departure of the black slave from his white slave master. America wishes only to hold the black slave in order to continue to treat him with evil. Pharaoh's hatred and injustice to Israel and Egypt in the time of Moses should serve America as a warning. 
but she has fallen headlong into the throes of destruction of Allah God. America runs to and fro seeking a way out, but she does not try to justify her black slave for justice and equality among the nations of the earth. America made us into nothing and she is used to mock us before the nations of the earth. But a God with unlimited wisdom, knowledge and power is now being befriended the black slave and he has chosen the black slave to be his people. But the foolish black people have yet to come into that knowledge that Allah God is their best friend and that he is there to save them from the destruction of a people who have shown enmity and hatred to us all of our lives. America divided us against the other. The black man in America is so divided against each other that you seek all of the time to do evil against each other. You cannot even befriend them unless they take advantage of it. They call you a fool for trying to befriend them as it is written with us. Midway Technical School came to us for help. We gave them the help to keep them from falling. It cost us $30,000 to set them free of their back rent and other bills that they had. Take a look at how they have turned on us for the purpose of wrecking all of the beautiful businesses set up for them and others to enjoy on the south side of Chicago. The fall of America foretold. Separation is the answer. Quran, Surah 81, Ayat 6, 7, and 12. And when the cities are set afire, and when the men are united, and when the hill is kindled. The fold up is the battle taken from the first verse of that chapter in which the above verses are found. When the sun is folded up in the Quran, Surah 81, Ayat 1, symbolically prophesizes the folding up of a recorded work. A record of what people have done and its use will no longer be necessary. This chapter refers to what takes place in the resurrection. One party is recorded as a beginning while the other party is discontinued. We see this clearly being made manifest today. War causes the destruction of civilizations. Wars destroy the cities and towns of a nation. This chapter 81 of the Quran is now being fulfilled. The sun and the stars, mountains, camels, and wild animals are all mentioned metaphorically in the first four verses of this chapter and are not without significance. The coming of God referred to by the prophets is to unite a people who have been divided against self by their enemies. He chose these people for building a better world. The Bible's revelation refers to the destruction of the beast and his chief instructor, the dragon. The name beast given here is not referring to four-footed animals, but to a people who rule is like that of a savage beast. Theologians, most of them from the time of Martin Luther, who I think was the author of these terms, beast and dragon, especially the late pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford, founders of the Jehovah's Witness sect, take the term dragon to refer to the Pope of Rome the father of Christian church and Christian religion. This is the first time since we have been lost in this part of the earth that we want to unite the black nations of the earth into one under the guidance of God who is now present. Why should the master continue to deceive his slave? He teaches the slave that he is a free citizen with equality. Why do you slave masters want to hold them for hostage and pray? You do not need them. Your machines do the labor that the slaves used to do. Why not let them go? You want to go to war against Allah and the freedom that Allah came to do for your slaves. Before you, Pharaoh had the same idea. He did not want Israel to go free in a land to themselves. Pharaoh lost the war against Allah and was drowned in the Red Sea. The losers of this world will land in a lake of fire, not water. If white America wanted to free her slaves, she could easily do so. This would be simpler and easier than what she is doing, killing and provoking them through police force, national guards, and finally the U.S. Army, as we did see in Detroit, Michigan. America actions show us two things. Firstly, she wishes to cause fear among the so-called Negroes with the display of many deadly weapons, but Allah is removing the fear. Secondly, 
She fears to approach her unarmed slave unless she is armed. This has been the historical relation between the white man and his slaves. The white man seeks the leadership of the so-called Negroes to help him keep the dissatisfied slaves subject to him without complaints about injustice. The white man's motto, nigger, you should be happy. You are better off than many of your black kind with a job. The white slave master brought our fathers here to do the slave work. Our free labor has made the white slave masters richer than their brethren Europeans. Do they offer us any of this land they took from the Indians? The 22 million so-called Negroes should be seeking some of this earth on which to live and build an independent nation out of self. The white master only offers us a job. Allah God has come in the person of Master Farah Muhammad to free us. The Negro slave must be free. This is the meaning of the resurrection. Allah God has said to me, Elijah Muhammad, that he intends to free the American so-called Negro at any price. For 400 years, you the slave master have been killing the so-called Negro without receiving any resistance. And regardless of his peaceful way with you, we, the Muslims, have tried to live in peace here in America. There is not a single incident in our 36 years of history where we have ever made an aggressive move against you, but you have attacked us several times. We have proved to the world that you are impossible to live with in peace. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doeth not resist you. Book of James, chapter 5, verse 6. You have destroyed many towns, cities, and people, as thou hast divided the so-called Negro one against the other, so Allah shall divide you and your brother. As you have done to others, so shall it be done unto you. When the cities are set on fire, this is a sign of the end of you as a power. The house doomed to fall. We cannot deny the fact that the Christian West is responsible for this universal corruption in the land and sea. From the same corruption that their own hands have wrought will still come their doom. The Christians preach that which they do not do and cannot do, such as love thy neighbor. I have as yet to meet one who loved his neighbor as he did himself. Thou shalt not kill. I have as yet to meet such a Christian. They even fight against each other, rob and kill each other, but yet represent themselves as world peacemakers with whom the great deceivers of the world will reap what they have sown. Have they not corrupted many people and nations under the guise of good, peaceful, loving Christians? The Christian West is full of the worst crimes, practicing evils and indecencies to the fullest and seeking to practice them on other nations as well. Universal tempters are ever parading before the world. They are bold, half nude girls and women. They are before your eyes in almost everything, murder, gambling, robbery, drunkenness, drugs, adultery, lying. There is hardly any end to it. Their land and seas are filled with deadly weapons of war. Their islands of the sea are filled with corruption by all the nations of the earth, for they are proud and boastful and are now hated and despised according to their wishes. Their religion, Christianity, is a curse to us, the black man, and is full of slavery teaching. They have poisoned the Bible with their adding to and taking from the truth. Now their doom is in sight. It is their own work. They command the sea with their powerful navies, parking them off the shores of other nations. They secure air bases on their soils to take place, their deadly bomb, carrying planes within easy striking distances of those with whom they fear to be their enemies. Is this not the easy way to make enemies? Is this the act of a real Christian? The followers of Jesus whom they preach came for the peace of mankind and to teach the sheathing of the sword and the turning of the other cheek. Where is a good Christian among this race? They love meddling in other people's affairs. They are in every fight or war. It matters not with them whom or where, but yet crying, peace, peace, with every deadly weapon of war to provoke other nations to war. Shall not the God of peace and justice deal 
with you and your troublemaking as he did with those before you? I want every one of you, my people, fly to Allah with me for refuge. As I have warned you, the judgment of this world has arrived. Get out of their slave-making Christianity and into the right religion, Islam. The house you are in shall surely fall and never rise again. The destruction and fall of the world that we have known is now without a doubt in process. When we refer to the world, we are referring to the world of the white man. For the world of the black man has yet to come in. The world of the black man, by divine guidance, is now merging in on the old world of the white race. This makes the destruction and fall of the world of the white man imminent. Here in America, we can see nothing but the fallout of America. It is no secret. It is obvious to the eyes that are open. If we want to close our eyes and minds to the claim that we do not see and understand, then we will be falling ourselves. This refusal to see this fool, hardly for regardless to how he may desire to see the old world stand, we do not have the power to stave off the destruction that causes the world of the white man to fall. The destruction and power that is bringing about the fall of the world of the white man is coming from Allah. In the past history of the world of the white man, there never was a time of destruction of his world like the present time. It is useless for you to try to prevent the fall of the white man's world. There is no checking it. The white race has not tried to do the right thing. Justice. The doing of justice would have checked her fall. But America was never willing. And even at this hour, she is not willing to do justice by those whom she has mistreated. She has dealt unjustly to her black one slaves for nearly 500 years that she has been in the Western Hemisphere. America has constantly burdened the poor black slave with every evil that she could imagine. Her evil scientists who have invented more and more evil practices have not been able to invent any more evil than that which they have already put out. Day and night without a let up, the white man mistreats the poor black slave. Now since heaven and the God of peace, justice, freedom, and equality has come to the black slave, the white man is trying to make everyone that recognizes the truth to deviate from it. The white man says, do not accept it. He makes the black man a hypocrite against his own salvation. The white man trails the one who has not as yet accepted the truth of their salvation, and he promises them that which he will never be able to fulfill. America is falling. She is now losing the power and authority that she was enjoying in foreign lands. Her fall is very visible. Wherever her authority has been exercised, the people are now crying out in one voice, leave us, leave us. Americans go home to America. The citizens of other countries are telling the American citizens, leave us. America no longer has friends. America and England deposited their little brother Israel on foreign soil, Palestine, which is an Arab land. They deprived the Arabs of their own land and sent them into exile. This injustice against the Arab is now costing America the power and authority that she once exercised in the East. She is on her way out of the East. This means bloodshed and plenty of it. In the East, there stands navies which are neither American nor British. They are there to drive America out. The skies over there are beginning to thicken with foreign planes carrying deadly weapons, guns, and bombs. They will not be satisfied as long as Israel is in Palestine. The boil has come to a bursting point. We are in a troubled world. We are in a world that is now erupting. Black men who was once a slave in America, you have a way of escape. The way out is not on your own terms. It is on the condition that you submit to Allah and come and follow me. This is the only way out. I am the door and I have the key to your salvation. Reject it and die. We are in a world that is falling. It will soon be going up in flames. In Berlin, Germany, the Cold War between the East and the West will soon erupt into a hot war. It will never be settled in peace. East and West Germany must and will fight it out. 
with all the planned deadly weapons that the war scientists have planned and perfected for the final showdown. You do not have to worry too much about whether or not America is coming out of Asia. Certainly, America is coming out of Asia. The odds are against her staying there. But I warn you, my black people, my black brother here in America, that while she is on the way home, we the black people are standing in on the crossfire. The only hope that we have is to fly to our refuge in Allah God. Look at what is going on in the south of us. Look at how many hijackings, sticking up of planes. America is so afraid to put a stop to the hijacking for she knows that she is going to run into more than she expects. Who would have thought that the bigger the power America would suffer such disgrace in this day and time? This is to teach you and me, black brother, that the great power America is becoming weak and she is falling. I say, black brother, join unto your own kind. Come follow me for the world that you and I have known will soon be no more. The day of America's downfall. Allah manifests the fall of America. He desires to make America fall as a warning to her brothers in Europe. White Americans and Germans, Allah has taught me, are the most wicked of the white race. The wicked deeds that have been performed and are still being performed by white Americans upon the so-called Negroes, their slaves, are the worst in the annals of history. They have been clever enough in their wickedness to make the so-called Negro slaves love them, even though they are their open enemies and murderers. Allah, in the person of Master Rob Muhammad, now judges the American whites and is causing America's fall and total destruction. Egypt under Pharaoh is an example, fulfilling the signs and other prophecies of the doom of this people as foretold by the prophets from Noah to Jesus. Moses and Jesus are the most outstanding prophets in the history of the Caucasian race for the past 4,000 years. There are several other contemporaries, but Moses and Jesus are the major prophets of the white race history. The whole of the civilized world today, as prophesied in Isaiah, is against the white man of America. Allah hates the wicked American whites and threatens to remove them from the face of the earth. Since white Americans and the white race in general have deceived the entire world of black people and their brethren, brown, red, and yellow, Allah now is causing these people to wake up and see the white race as it really is, the created enemy of the darker people. As we see today, there is a general awakening of the darker people into the knowledge of self and the knowledge of their age old 6,000 years enemy, the white man. As we see today, there is a general awakening of the dark people into the knowledge of self and into the knowledge of their 6,000 year old enemy. The American white race cannot sincerely give the so-called Negroes, their slaves, a square deal. She only desires to deceive them. Today, America is trying against her will to give the so-called Negro civil rights which is against the very nature and the will of the white race. For the first time since the black man has been here, America falsely offers him social equality in certain parts of the country. This social equality consists mostly of the permitting the American black race to mix openly with the white man and his woman, the devils. The actual idea, however, is to grant the so-called Negro social equality among the lower class of whites. This is done so that the scriptures wherein they prophesy that the white man tempts and corrupts the so-called Negroes with his women might be fulfilled. God has taught me that the white race was grafted from an unalike. It is able to attract the black man and black woman, getting them to do all of the evil and indecency known to the white race. One of the prophets of the Bible prophesied in regards to America as the morning spreads abroad upon the mountains, a great and strong people set in battle array. That's in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 2. This is the setting of the nations for a showdown to determine who will live on earth. The survivor is to build a nation of peace to rule the people of the earth forever under the guidance of Almighty God. With the nation setting forth 
for a final war at this time, God pleased for his people, the inheritors of the earth, the so-called Negroes, to do what? The so-called Negro is the prey of the white man of America being held firmly in the white man's power, along with two million Indians who must be redeemed at this time and will be. If the so-called Negro turns to his redeemer, the problem of the American black man and his unwillingness to be separated from his 400-year-old enemies, the problem, therefore, is harder to solve, especially with the enemy trying to fascinate the Negro with his lower class girls and women, arraying them partly nude before the Negroes in every public news media. The problem between these two people, separating and dignifying the so-called Negro so they may be accepted and respected as equals or superior to other nations, must be solved. This is God's promise to the so-called Negro, the lost and found members of the original black nation of the earth. This promise was made through the mouths of his prophets, Bible and Quran, that he would separate us from our enemies, dignify and make us the masters after this wicked race has been judged and destroyed for its own evils. But as I said, the solving of this problem, which means the redemption of the Negro, is hard to do since he loves his enemies. That's in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 15, and verse 18, the book of Psalms, the book of Isaiah, the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 32, and the book of Revelation, chapter 14. The manifestation of Allah and judgment between the so-called Negro and the enemy of God and the nation of Islam would make the so-called Negro see and know his enemy and himself, his people, his God, and his religion. We hear the statements of black educational, political, and Christian classes which express their love for the white man, publicly asking to be his brothers, if not his brother-in-law. Now this class wants to make it clear to the world that they really love the white race and not the black race. This means that they want to be white instead of black. The devils have made them hate black. They reject the thought of black ever being the ruler or equal with the ruler. They ask boldly for inferiority, not only for themselves, but for their people. They want to absorb themselves and their kind, especially the so-called American Negro, into the race of white people, thus ending the black race. It is just the opposite with Allah God, myself and my followers. We want no claim to kinship with a people who by nature are not our kin. Read from Genesis to Revelations in the Bible and from Surah 2 to Surah 114 of the Quran. By no means are the so-called Negroes and the whites kin. God did not create them brothers, nor did he create them ever to become brothers. One is created an enemy against the other. And since the righteous are more powerful than the wicked, Allah, the God of righteousness, set a time of reckoning for the enemy of the righteous. We want separation. We want a home on this earth we can call our own. We want to go for ourselves and leave the enemy who has been sentenced to death by Allah from the day he was created. No one, white, black, brown, yellow, or red, can prove to me by any scriptures of Allah God sent by one of the prophets of Allah God that we should not be separated from the white race, that we should believe and follow the religion dictated, shaped, and formed by the white theologians. The coming of Allah and the judgment of the wicked world is made clear by the prophetic sayings of the prophets. The so-called reverence and the proud intellectual classes are doomed to destruction with the enemy if they remain with him instead of joining on to Allah who loves them and who will deliver them and the nation of Islam. The so-called Negro masses must be warned of the grave mistake they make in following the leadership of those who love and befriended their murderers. This will not get them freedom or civil rights. America is falling. Her doom has come and none, said the prophets, shall help her in the day of her downfall. In the Bible, God pleased with you to fly out of her, 
and seek refuge in him. It certainly will change your minds about the following, a doomed people, a people who hate you and your kind, and who calls one who teaches the truth about them a hater. They are the producers of haters of us. We are with God and the righteous. The days of trouble have now come to us from Almighty God Allah, the God who is the real owner of the heavens and the earth. Allah God created for himself a heaven and then he let it out to a foreigner, the white race, for them to enjoy themselves in it for a while. They have proved unworthy of such glorious creation. And now the God who is the owner of this heaven and earth is ready to take over and rule it for himself. Never no more will the earth nor the heavens of the earth be let out to non-owners. It is a great wisdom taught to us in letting new creatures try their knowledge of mastering that which they were not made to master, which we knew when we made them that they would not be able to master the original creation for long. For as long as we, the black people, are of the planet, there is no new creature that could be put in order for ruling that which we already have, and we are in it. It is such a wise piece of work that has been done. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the originator of his creation is just. This race, the white race, has not been successful in ruling according to their will and according to a real owner, for the white race had to use the originator's material that he himself had created. There is nothing of which the white man can call himself the creator of. So therefore, since the white man continued to make trouble, which by nature he was made to do so, we do not see any way out of trying to live with the white man in peace. The nature of the white man is ever causing unrest among themselves and among us too. The white man just cannot make peace for himself because of his nature. Today God has decided that we, the black people, cannot get along with the white man in peace and that the white man must be removed. The white race wanted to remove us, the black people, but in order for the white man to remove us, the black man, he would have to remove the whole entire heavens and make the heavens void of anything like life. Then from a void, we would have to start all over again and create life. For the life in the universe is life that we, the black people, have established. Therefore, to get away from our own life so that a new life could come in, we would have to rid the space of life which belongs to us, the black man. And when the space was rid of the life that we, black people, had created, another one would come to create life of its own making. We, the poor black people here in America, must be changed into a new and different people altogether. So Allah God came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all praises I do forever taught me, but not a complete make of us. We will be renewed from what we are in now, and we call it a new thing. There will come a day when we will have a completely new thing for man and earth and the heavens above us. But according to the scientists, God will cause this to grow into a new thing, not a complete destruction of the old where there is no root to grow something from, not at this time. The things that Allah God would like to do now and will do is to destroy the works of the devil as the devil would like to destroy God's work which God has created. The devil cannot destroy God's creation because the devil had no part in the creation of the first creation. Since the devil had no part in the first creation, this makes the devil unable to lay hold to the power that would destroy the first work of God. The main thing which I keep mentioning enough to make you disgusted is something for the black man here in America who has spent his life long and sleeping in ignorance of the knowledge of that which he is in. But as soon as the black man can awaken to the knowledge of this that he is in, then he can lay hold to that which he did not have knowledge of, which is that the black man is the creator of the first creation. Allah God wants to put the black man back into power and the way that the black man can be put back into power is Allah. Allah has to make the black man all over again 
to master the power after giving the black man the authority. Look at our poor, once pitiful black man in America. Look at how he strives to reach for himself and is now making a fast progress in that which God leads him for to understand. The black man's conversation is changed. The black man's way of thinking is changed. His actual physical form is changed. It is a great thing that has come to the black man in America. The black man in America is getting happier and happier. It is not hard for the black man in America to get rich, for he is getting rich from his own wisdom. No one has given him anything. As the Bible teaches you of the prodigal son, no one gave unto him, but he is getting rich so fast that God chooses the prodigal son to become the head of the house that he strayed away from. The future of the black man is so beautiful that we can hardly comprehend it. The biggest thing that stands before us is qualification and readiness. Let us get qualified to master the house of God that he has given unto us before someone tries to rob us of that mastery of the house. If they rob us of the mastery of the house, I am sorry for us. I say to you, black brother and black sister, do not be foolish. The kingdom of heaven will be given to you and to me. Have patience to receive it. But to get the house into our service, it is like a mother giving birth to a baby. The baby must mature in that which he is in. As a baby matures in the womb of the mother in order to be born, so the black man must be mature to be born into a new world that the black man must build for himself. These are the days of trouble. Plagued by God, America is doomed. With the end of the rule of the white race over the black people of the earth in sight, face to face, we have to deal with each other according to the actual facts which exist between the two nations. With the nature and desire of the white race to continue their rule and subjection of the darker people, even though the white man recognizes these facts, he will continue to try holding on to his rule, his subjection, his thinking of what he has acquired under such rule, that which is his and cannot give up the prey, his concession, the merchandise which he has exploited out from under the noses and eyes of the real owners, he is willing to shed the blood of his own people and that of others to hold on to that which he called his legal possessions. The spirit aroused in the black man says, no, that the continent and what is on and under its surface belongs to him. The continent and what is on and under its surface belongs to him and his people. The spirit and knowledge is now not only confined to Africa and Asia, the black, brown, and yellow people, but it is actually now arising in the American so-called Negro, the true lost and found brother of the black man throughout the earth. Whether it be Africa or Asia, he is the brother of them all. It is the desire of the white race to continue to hold power and authority over black Africa, whether it is Rhodesia or elsewhere. They would just have to give it up. England, Germany, Italy, and France, especially England, France, and skeleton Germany, seems to be the diehards. The white man in Rhodesia would be acting wisely if they would realize that one day sooner or later, they must pack up and leave. Whether I quote the Bible prophecy concerning the separation of nations again, today as it was before, every man must go to his own. This is the clearest and most direct justice that God and man could agree on. The white man cannot live in luxury unless he has the black man and his place of possession and subjection to his will. But as I repeatedly say in this paper and in all of my writings, you cannot make God and his prophets liars, nor can we reverse the time of their prediction in which these things would take place. So the time has come. This is nothing but justice that we have possession of what is our own. The white man is conscious of the fact that he deceived the black man of the knowledge of the black man and his possessions. But that particular authority was given divinely, temporarily. But the same, but by the same divinity, it is now being taken from the white race. The white race is facing doom because she will not act according to justice and righteousness. 
which was not by nature put in her. But this is known and but this is known and her race is frightened concerning her future as we see here in America. The white man recognizes his coming of doom and many of them would rather die here than to go elsewhere outside of America to try to defend what they call their own independent sovereignty. Some have poured gasoline over themselves and committed suicide by setting themselves afire. This is a very new and open act of a people who want every other people, black, brown, yellow, and red on the earth to fight their wars to save their independence. A ruthless and brutal people like America, England, and Germany should be ashamed in this modern time to look for these people whom they have robbed, killed, murdered, and brought under subjugation by force to think that today they should be so soundly asleep that they ignore the time and the authority that they can unite as the European has been doing against black Africa and the brown and the yellow Asian. As the book says to the white race, as thou hast done, so shall it be done unto thee. The white man must return to Europe and concentrate on that continent for his future or else concentrate on his death instead of his life for they can no longer rule the black man. The black man now knows where his home is and he is now rising up to take possession of what is his.